Thanks for watching IOD TV, the IOD DIY Christmas edition. What are we doing now? We are starting off, kicking off our IOD Christmas. IOD DIY Christmas. And we are starting with the best project ever. You're gonna love it so much! <laughs> That was a little extra. <laughs> so we are doing tin can luminaries. Seriously guys, I really hope you hang in there for this tutorial. These little tin cans are darling luminaries and they're mostly stuff that you have around your house. There is a list of supplies, but all of the links are in the info. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I like to go to Costco and get the 12 pack mm -hmm. of tomato pastes and make some sketty. And then I've got all these cool tin cans. And you want to use one of the openers that leaves, it's, it's a little strange, it's not, there's no blade on it. But what it leaves is it leaves a perfectly smooth, no sharp edges on the can and the lid. So you can mm -hmm. actually use the lid too for something. Awesome. So, should we just get started? Let's get started. All right. All right, so what we're going to do is we want to get our pattern on here for drilling. Before you start, you should find some goggles to make sure that your eyes are protected anytime you're drilling, and especially if you're drilling metal. Masking tape, and you could use the blue painter's tape if you wanted as well, is going to give us a little bit of a grip on the surface for our bit, which makes it easier so it's not sliding around on the top and the bottom and leave a space for our decorative moldings on the middle. Now, the thing we like about using the drill as opposed to a nail is it gives you a cleaner hole. But you'll still want to go in after and sand a little bit to smooth off any rough edges. We're gonna put in a pattern with the Sharpie and we're just doing a staggered simple two rows. You could do as much or little as you want. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to show you how we drill it. If you have a vise, that's super helpful. If not, then this really is a two person job. Somebody to stabilize it while you drill. This is what your can's going to look like after your holes are all drilled in it. Isn't that cool? Okay, so after you're done drilling and you take your tape off, you want to go ahead and hit the inside with a coarse sandpaper or a metal rasp if you have one. Because there are little edges and you don't want to reach in there and get a little metal splinter. That's not cool at all. And then if you have any on the outside, do the same on the outside. All right, so now's the fun part. We are going to use a variety of molds on these, and we're going to be using our IOD paper clay, which is an air dry clay, and we love it. Now, whenever you're using paper clay, you wanna keep the portion that you're not using under wraps because it will dry out and get crumbly. You want to avoid overworking it. You just want to kind of soften it up in your hands enough to where it's um, a little bit softer. And then you're going to roll it into the general shape of the cavity you're using. We're using this laurel wreath key. And then you're going to press it in and you're going to remove excess. In this case, I'm going to remove even a little more than I normally would because I don't want this piece to be too thick because we're working on a smaller scale project. I normally do not use any kind of extra release agent. However, if you find you need to or want to, you can just brush a little bit of cornstarch or arrowroot in there. And there we have a gorgeous casting. We are going to use some of this ultimate multi-surface adhesive. We're gluing this on while it's still damp. So there's a few special considerations. One is you want a multi-surface adhesive. And then we're going to tack it in place. 
there. And really get it set into place firmly. Get your edges down nicely so that it is seated well. Then what you're going to do is while it dries, you're just going to tack it into place with some repositional, or I'm sorry, some uh, like painter's tape. Just go ahead and put that on there in a couple of spots so that it doesn't slide around while you have it off to the side drying. All right, now we have, we have some chalk paint in pure white. This is Annie Sloan chalk paint. It's a nice thick and creamy for a great finish on here. We're going to, now I wanna note, I'm going in while wet and sometimes we do that because it's quite often that we need to do that for classes. So that's what I'm doing here. But you can go ahead and let it dry if you have time, you're not teaching or taking a class. Go ahead and let it dry before you paint it. Assistant, can you get me a clean brush? Oh, you did not. <laughs> I did. <laughs> okay, we are going to white wax. We're going to get a little bit of the wax and then I'm going to offload it. Usually you would use a paper plate, but we happen to have a nice convenient paper cover here, so we're just gonna do that. This is Annie Sloan's white wax. And you're going to work it into all your details. Get it applied on there nicely. This is a little on the thick side. I should have offloaded a little more. That's okay. It's very forgiving that way. And it's going to really pop the details. Okay, then you're gonna let that set up and dry for a little bit. And let's, while we wait on that, go ahead and do our red one. mixed a little bit of the white and a little bit of the clear and some graphite just a touch to make a gray mm. so that we could just kind of antique this really working it in there that's so pretty just want to pop the detail Work it into the crevices of the mold. Yeah. And then, just go on and just kind of remove the excess and buff it. Beautiful. Okay, now we're going to put our hanger on it. And depending on how high you want it, do twice that much because I'm going to twist two pieces together. So I'm going to go like this. This is about two six inch pieces, so a 12 inch length in half of thin wire. Okay, so then I'm going to... So you strung it completely I've strung it completely through, through. Two, holes. two holes. And then I'm going to, you want to make sure that this end is you're joining the ends together and then folding it back on itself and twisting it like Maybe that. Maybe move a little closer to the camera. There we go. Okay, now 
Oh, look at I'm you, going you smart to thing. Put this so that it's just like right there. So you don't see it. Right, so you don't see it. And then I'm going to loop this up, right? Oh. So that it's oh, I need a little bit more. Two strands, and then you can just go through and kind of twist them. Oh, happy day. Oh, that is so fun. You guys, this imagine is... these hanging all over your Christmas tree. Hi. Okay, oops. <laughs> the way you said that. <laughs> Get on your eyes. I know, right? Okay, edit out that part. Okay. All right, so first we want to get... We're gonna do oh, that yeah, yeah. with a... <laughs> Okay. And you'll want to, um, really quick, the clean, what she means with clean <laughs> Clean holes. I'm sorry, I've got the giggles. Okay. You're so lucky that you have this wall. I know. <laughs> I'm totally lucky. I love my wall. Merry Christmas! Let's try again. Let's just do a few. Thank you so much for joining us for this IOD DIY segment. We enjoy so much bringing you fresh ideas with our products and we know that you guys rock it, so mm -hmm. thanks again. For more IOD DIY Christmas segments, be sure to catch our other videos by swiping down. Okay, that'll do. Bartle do.